Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today we are going to be talking about how to create parametric models in Fusion 360. So if you don't know what a parametric model is, it's basically just any model that um, has a set of variables that you can adjust and the model will adjust accordingly to whatever you set those variables to. And that way you can quickly change some variables, get a new model to fit a new purpose, so it just makes for a very, very dynamic model. Today I'm going to be showing you a really simple way of doing that. Using Fusion 360, um, we're going to be creating a little box that we can adjust to make it any size we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a box the normal way, not worry about any variables or anything like that. We're just going to create a box. And then after that, we will go in and make it parametric. So first thing, I'm going to come up to sketch, create a sketch, and I'm just going to select the ground plane here. And I'm going to hit R to create a rectangle. Um, doesn't need to be anything specific right now. And then I'll hit O to make an offset and select the rectangle I just did. And I'll bring it in just a bit, hit enter. And now um, that's really all we need to start our box. I'm going to select this middle guy here, pull him up. We'll just go five for now. And then um, I'll unhide the sketch. And then drag this one up a little bit farther. And join is OK for the operation here. Then I'll hide the sketch again. So that makes this just one solid little piece. And you can see it's a box. We could put some stuff in there. That's all good to go. I'm actually going to make this just a little bit higher. And just to make it interesting, I'm going to put a circle through the front of it. So I'm just going to create a sketch here, hit C for circle, and then create a circle right there. And then I'm going to extrude it through this side. So let me stress real quick that this is just for the purposes of demonstration and showing you how to use variables in Fusion 360. Um, a lot of the things I'm doing here, uh, there are other ways and probably better ways to achieve it. but um, I'm just doing this to show you what could possibly be done with some of these functions. Okay, so now that we have our box, let's go ahead and think about what um, variables we could create to um, adjust this box. And first of all, this is a three-dimensional object, so you've got your basics. You've got a width, a height, and a depth. That'll give us um, the main shape of the box. Then um, we can declare a wall thickness to um, figure out how thick we want these walls to be and I'll make that the same for the bottom, um, the floor there. And then um, we could do a circle diameter. Now let's get started. Um, how you get to the parameters menu is you come up to modify and you go down to change parameters. And this is the window that comes up. And user parameters are the ones we're interested in. So we can hit this little plus here and it brings up a little menu. So now we are adding a new parameter. And I'm just gonna start with the basics. So I'll go width. And then I'll leave it as millimeters because that's what I'm working in. And I'm just going to make the width uh, 60 millimeters. Do the same for height. Um, I'm going to make that 80 millimeters. Depth, I will go 40. Then let's do wall thickness. I'm going to make that uh, 2 millimeters. And then um, the circle in the middle. And actually, to make this one just a little more interesting, I'm actually going to go circle radius. And I'm going to set that to 20 for right now. So the diameter will be 40. All right, well, I think that's all we need right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now um, let's go back and edit the first sketch we created. So you can either right click right here and go edit sketch. You can actually double click this or you can come down to the timeline right here, basically where my face is hiding um, and right click and go edit sketch there as well. I'm just going to double click this and it takes us back to where our sketch was. Now you can either hit the D key or you can come up to sketch and go sketch dimensions and that basically allows you to place a constraint on these. Um, and I'm going to select this wall here and this wall here, drag it out to the side, and that's just basically letting me set the width right there. And for that, if you remember, the uh, variable that I set up was named width. So I'm just going to type width. And you can see right here that Fusion recognized what I was typing and suggests that um, I go with width, the user parameter that I created. And I'm going to do that, so I'm going to click it hit enter and now you can see there's an fx in front of the 60 there and that just basically denotes that this is a function that um, equates to 60 it's not just a hard 60 now I'm gonna do the same for the um, depth here and I'm just gonna set that to depth that's all good and then the wall thickness is actually the offset that we created and that one already has a dimension here so I'm just gonna double click that and I'm gonna go wall thickness 
And now you can see that this sketch is conforming to the numbers we put in place. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sketch. And you can see that the object has um, reflected those changes. And now the circle's a little off and we still need to set the height. So I need to take care of these extruded things down here. And I'm actually going to hide my face real quick so you can see the, the timeline. Um, that is right down here. So this was the first extrude that we did. And if we click that, you can see it actually highlights there that it was the, um, the floor there that we did. So I'm going to double click that and it will allow me to go back in time when we did that. And instead of setting five right here for the distance, we can actually just set wall thickness. And um, it allows us to put in those variables right there. Hit OK, now that's taken care of. And then do the same for the height. And instead of 85, I will just go height. And now this box is pretty much fully constrained. We just need to fix this circle right here. So we created this circle with this second sketch here. So I'm going to double click that. It'll allow me to edit it. I'm going to hit D and then select this circle here. So you can see that that is the diameter. But we put in radius to make it a little more interesting. So I'll type in circle radius right here. Hit enter. And the cool thing about Fusion is that it lets us do equations here. Um, so I can throw in other parameters, add things together, multiply things, whatever I want to do. In this case, since I made it a radius, all we need to do is multiply it by 2. So I'll hit enter, and now you can see that the function is 40. And we can confirm that that was true by um, going to modify, checking our parameters, and seeing that the circle radius was indeed 20. So 40 would be uh, 2 times that. Now you'll notice already that when we resized this, the circle is no longer um, generally in the center. It's off to the side. It does not look great. So um, if we wanted to center this, all we'd have to do is um, hit D again to measure. I'm going to select the top piece here and then go down to this dot, which is the center of the circle. And then we can measure that. And we want it to be directly in the center of both the width and the height. So here the distance we want to be half of the height. So I'll just type in height divided by 2. And now that should be centered and I'll do the same over here. So this one I can go width divided by 2. And now that is centered so I'll stop sketch and as I rotate around you can see that it is indeed in the center and the hole is right through it. So now we can come up to um, change parameters so this is looking kind of like a deck box you'd put cards in. Um, but what if we wanted just a little bit wider of a box that was a little less deep that we could just store things that would be easy to grab out of it. So for the width, we can double click here. And um, I want this to be quite a bit more, so I'll go 120. And you can see that that was reflected there. Then the circle is still centered. And then this was the height, so I want that to be shorter. Let's go 40 and um, depth, I'm gonna go 80. Wall thickness is fine, but now you can see that that circle is not really what we wanted. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna make that a lot smaller. I'm gonna go five, but this is the radius, so it'll ultimately be a 10 diameter circle. So now we have a fully parametric box with a hole in the front. And then anytime we need a different size box, we can come in here, adjust these variables, and it's basically ready to print. Now, obviously, this was a simplified example just to get the point across. But if you mess with it a little bit, um, you'll quickly start to see different things you can do to make your designs parametric. And this is actually an extremely powerful tool. And if you combine that with the timeline down here and sketch constraints, if you constrain your things right and then add variables, um, you can really create just about anything and make it parametric. It's extremely powerful. But constraints are kind of a beast of a subject, so um, I think they deserve their own video. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found this useful. If you've done this before, let me know what you've used it for or let me know what you plan to use it for in the future down in the comments. And I have a whole series of Fusion 360 tutorial videos. Um, they're mostly basic stuff on like how to use the tools and things like that. But I will put a playlist up in the corner over there and down in the description so you can check that out if you want to. And then if you'd like to see how I'm getting my model to move around so smoothly like this, you can check out this cool 3D mouse that I just reviewed. Um, I'll put the video up there as well. All right, guys. Well, you know what to do. If you like this video, hit that like button, get subscribed, and then I will see you next time.